Greetings, fellow Amblemites. Tiki here. And Blue Dragon 5. And welcome to the sixth season of... Spielberg Monk! Monk. Since Steven Spielberg doesn't do audio commentary on his own work, we thought we'd do it for him. After all he's done for us, it's the least we could do for him. Since we're getting near the end of Spielberg's vast catalog and want to keep the party going as long as we can, this month features a duo of historical Spielberg epics and a couple tributes along the way. So, let us board La Amistad and sail into a sea of history as gripping as Daniel Day-Lewis in Lincoln. Let's roll film! on Spielberg, and ride our bikes to the green planet. It's time for another season of... Spielberg! Alright. Dragon, uh, never has, uh, except when we covered the actual movie itself, never has uh, that been more appropriate for what we're talking about on Spielberg Month! Month. 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 <laughs> uh, tonight, Dragon, uh, hello, I'm Steven Spielberg, and we're talking the E.T. adventure. Yes. I don't know if I got that cadence exactly right, Dragon, but I know Probably you love not. that. So. <laughs> I do, I do love that. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Dragon, of course, uh, you and I both experienced this at Universal Florida. Would you believe that when I was a kid, I was, uh, when I went to Universal Hollywood, and I wasn't, like, a little kid, I was, like, 11 years old, but, uh, I was too scared to go on the E.T. adventure, specifically because I knew how weird the second half was. Really? Yeah, I was like, okay, you know what, like, like uh, the forest stuff I can handle, the flying over the moon I can handle, but I don't know what's on the other side of that moon, man. <laughs> yeah, you just fear all plant life, don't you? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I honestly think I would have been a little freaked out. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Uh, but Dragon, I'm gonna let you go first on the thesis, because you probably have more to say. I, I imagine you have more nostalgia for this. I only just recently got to, got to do it. Yeah, I, uh, I have so much nostalgia for this attraction. You know, this, uh, to me, this is Universal's under-the-radar crowning achievement in many respects. Uh, you know, the, the moment those doors close... It's like you've stepped into a Steven Spielberg movie, and mm -hmm. it's it, it's so simple, yet yet so immersive, and captures essentially the universal mission statement of bringing the park goers into their favorite movies, which I just feel is so well captured in the ET adventure. And it was always just kind of this. It was like it's just one of those just one of those great kind of memories and great experiences. And every time you go back, it's like it's it's like visiting an old friend because that's what the ride is. You're visiting your old pal ET. <laughs> totally, totally. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I Dragon, I really think that this thing is, uh, it's a better Peter Pan's flight in a lot of ways for me personally. I mean, first of all, the capacity on it is way better than Peter Pan's flight. It's actually kind of a people eater in that regard, so I appreciate that from just a, uh, you know, from just a theme park kind of like efficiency point of view. But you're absolutely right, Dragon. Like, top to bottom, the whole thing just has such an immersive quality to it from the minute that those doors close and we get kind of like the familiar, you know, the do, 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 And then, you know, Steven Spielberg's like, oh, you need to help me find my friend E.T. You know, like 90s era Spielberg. Gotta love it. <laughs> and Dragon, uh, you know, it, it's just, it is a weird, weird attraction, though. I mean, that's the thing. I, I don't know. I don't think it's perfect in in that respect, but I do respect it a lot. Um, and as we're going to talk about momentarily, I, I assume you've got some background on it, but as we're going to talk about momentarily, the queue just 
to me, kind of just makes the attraction even more so than the actual ride does. I, mean, I absolutely was, agree with that, for sure. The queue is queue. so immersive. It is my favorite part of the attraction. Sure. Uh-huh. All right, so, Dragon, do you have any backstory you want to get into with this thing? Yes, I do. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, of course, you know, the E.T. attraction, you know, it opened, uh, you know, we're speaking very serendipitously at the time of, uh, you know, this uh, kind of our little discussion here, uh, puts it at either 30 years to the day or over 30 years to the, to, to essentially the week. Uh, so it opened in Florida in 1990. That's freaking crazy that it's been that long. Yep, so that kind of puts us in the, uh, kind of like a, a 31 years roughly, and then we have uh, the Universal Hollywood, which is, uh, it opens in 91 to the day, I believe. Like one day technically the... older than I am. <laughs> and uh, in Japan, it, it opened in uh, in uh, 2001. Ah, uh-huh, cool, cool. Yeah. So, um, so Steven Spielberg, he was very hands on in the development of this, uh, and it was as the the kind of the genesis was really interesting. So, of course, you know we know famously uh, Steven Spielberg, he's buddies with George Lucas. I love that relationship. I always love the fact they're buddies. <laughs> Two iconic. <laughs> Two iconic film smiths are but are buddies like that, and of course they had, like they have other director pals too. It's just, again, someone needs to make a movie about this and fast. I mean, blockbuster can only can only tantalize us so much. Am I right? But uh, <laughs> no, seriously. So um, so Star Tours opens with George Lucas and he invites his pal Steven Spielberg there to go on the ride with them and just kind of they pal around and, and uh, George Lucas kind of has some bragging rights essentially. And uh, Spielberg at this point, you know, he's kind of signed the deal with, uh, yeah, you know, with Universal in terms of like you know the, the develop some theme park stuff. You know, with uh, you know, with his blessings and everything, and George Lucas saying, "Oh, Stephen, I feel so bad for you. You're, uh, you know, you you backed the wrong horse. Mm-hmm. You should have gone with Disney. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't have gone with with Universal." And uh, and basically, uh, Steven Spielberg is kind of dedicated at that point, uh, not in like a malicious way, just to prove Georgie Boy wrong. And uh, this resulted in you know, Spielberg with you know the movies that he's both produced and directed. Uh, you know, he's very much you know has has hands in you know back to the it gets us uh, back to the future, Jaws, and ET in development right up you know right up and there. Jurassic Park as well. And Jurassic Park as well. I'm just saying specifically those three kind of from the lit fire. I think Jurassic right, Park right, right, yeah, it. Jurassic Park. You're right. Was a little further on. Um, yeah, I mean, I want to say Jurassic Park came out like around the same time in Hollywood. It just took a little while for it to get to Florida. Sure. So. Um, so the point being is like you know those really lit the fire and we need like big draws and those are like okay we need draws that can actually compete with Disney and those were kind of the main the main three and of course Jurassic Park is kind of being kind of already facilitated at that point in time I don't want to speak to specificities but those are the three that have been kind of been mentioned. Uh, right. The thing with Jurassic Park too is that I they might not have even had the room for Jurassic Park at the time because it did end up in the second park so. Exactly. So this was like just for the main, you know, all three of these were very much kind of the uh-huh. main, you know, universal, not the islands of adventure, kind of bifurcated, kind of the whole, how that whole deal works. Anyway, so uh, they took the story. Uh, I, this is a really obscure pool. Uh, I don't, I assume, I don't want to say with full autonomy, this is exactly what happened, but the much speculated story behind the, uh, what the story of the attraction is that there was one of those sequelized uh, kind of uh, novelizations that was released as in, the sequel to E.T. in novel form for, for the kids is The Book of the Green Planet. So basically the speculation as to what E.T.'s home planet would look like and you know, characters and everything. I don't know how, how, how full-on adaptation it is in, in regards to the ride. The ride feels suspiciously like, yeah, we kind of create some characters for the ride versus like direct pulls. From, outside of Botanicus, I think everyone else is kind of thrown in there. Just, a, just kind of a hunch. I agree. Of I agree. I'm not going to lie. I, it's I, an I, instinct. I, I, like, generally speaking, I don't like the aliens besides Botanicus in this ride, but... <laughs> anyway, so, uh, as Tiki noted, uh, Peter Pan's flight, clearly, uh, you know, the inspiration, very much the ride model, kind of like, okay, we need something like Peter Pan's flight in terms of, like, what we can compete with, now, with what, what's going Gurr, on. Did, did, did Gurr work on this at all, do you know, Dragon? I should know that. Well, to I my knowledge, it wasn't know Gurr, but it was Peter Yeah, I didn't Banks. think so. I didn't think so, because I feel like I would have known about it if it was Gurr. Right. So, um, uh, Peter Alexander worked on it. Then. Peter okay. Alexander, he he was a Disney Imagineer, and uh, he was one of the guys behind Confrontation. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That, that That's interesting, because Confrontation, I assume he probably did the uh, the ride vehicles for Confrontation? I believe so, but I'm... I, uh, Which is more... funny, because that's like, it's like one of the few times that Gurr worked on an animatronic instead of a ride vehicle. <laughs> So that's funny how that worked out. <laughs> Anyways. Right. Okay, so um, 
I'll save a few chestnuts from we're kind of breaking things down sure, here. Sure. But let me just let me just tell you, of course, the sad kind of like uh, kind of ending to our story here. It's kind of the ET die segment of the background. <laughs> Um, so E.T., uh, of course, um, E.T. Adventure met the tragic fate of most of the Universal Classics and that it kind of closed and transformed into other rides uh, throughout the years and uh, within out of the three parks. Uh, so uh, Hollywood, um, now, now here, here's the thing, though. The word is that this was done without telling Steven Spielberg because oh, they were... Oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spielberg, that's the thing, Dragon. You think it's... Uh... If you think it's going anywhere, basically, Dragon, if they if they touched it in Florida, they would pretty much have to sever their relationship with Spielberg. I mean, that's that's essentially the ultimatum he has them in right now, as exactly. far as I know. The way the way the word the word comes down here, I think it's pretty. That sounds pretty found. I could buy it. Where mm -hmm. you know, Spielberg, they were fearing his wrath, and of course, Spielberg, he's busy often, so they kind of were able to get away with it because of that fact. Well, Spielberg's busy with God knows how many other things, so he's not going to notice. So you know, uh, Hollywood uh, in, in Hollywood, we we uh, we got rid of it in uh, in uh, 2003, and they replaced it with uh, the, the Mummy Ride. Yes, and I gotta say, um, Revenge of the Mummy in Florida is a masterclass of a roller coaster. Like, it, it is, like, probably, for my money, one of the best indoor roller coasters in the world. The one in Hollywood is fine. Like, I don't think it's an actively bad ride. It's fine. You know, but, that's but about all of destroying it. the E.T. attraction. Absolutely not. <laughs> Honestly, if it was up to par with the Florida one, I gotta say maybe. I gotta say maybe. Because the Florida one is a classic in its own right. But no, absolutely not the Hollywood one. All right, and then uh, in Tokyo, yeah, in Tokyo, Japan, they uh, they had uh, they they have this thing called uh, it's basically some sort of space ride. It's uh, mm, mm. yeah, yeah. I don't know what it's called, but I, I've seen ride vi ride video of it. It looks kind of like a. Uh, it almost looks like a, a Mario Kart type ride. Like it kind of looks like a Mario Kart meets Space Mountain type of ride. Just in yeah, it's design. called it's called Space Fantasy. That's what it's called. Yes, yes I have no yes. idea what it is. I have no idea. Like really, it, 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 I just, my instinct having not seen it's it, it's an indoor before. roller coaster. Really? Uh huh. Well, you know my my assumption much was like uh, much like Hollywood uh, indoor roller coasters tend to be the death of ET. My, my assumption was much simpler. My assumption was oh, that God. it was just like we literally just basically took out the bikes and we were just kind of going around in the space section of it. <laughs> just around like kind of lasers. Yeah, we pretty much like just kind of a generic like, ooh, it's space and we're going around basically. Just exploring. Wow. That's, that's what I thought it was. Nope, not even close. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better. Not that, yeah, it's Tokyo, so it really has no bearing on me, so I, I guess I'm fine with it. But again, just, anyway... Anyway, uh, so um, Nintendo Land, the storm clouds are 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 a marching though because uh, Nintendo Land is laying claim to the Woody Woodpecker kind of section of, um, of 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 Florida. What's your source on that? Well, I, I'm sorry, I just, I, I I'm just operating on the uh, the knowledge of uh, there had like this Nintendo Land. I've heard that it's it's been circling that area because it's been coming to the other you know Universal Parks or something like that. Dragon, I, I I already told you Nintendo I, Land in Florida is going to Epic Universe. Well, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yes, uh, but you know, thankfully they Sorry, to play to, pl to play devil's advocate though. Um, if they want to expand Nintendo Land and kind of like maybe the same way that they expanded Harry Potter into uh, into other parks, um, then yes, I could absolutely see the kid zone being in danger. But I could also see E.T. just being in its own back little corner is just kind of like, you know, like this part of the park is just basically a museum for E.T., if you will. Yeah. And them not touchy, like them basically destroying everything else around E.T. and then just kind of keeping E.T. in the back. But uh, I don't know. But, uh, you know, if you think about it, there's a lot of uh, there, like they have the Simpsons in that side of the park, which from what I hear, the rights to the Simpsons theme park rights are going to uh, be relapsed back to Disney very soon. Um, 
But they've also got Fear Factor Live back there, which is a huge stadium. Fear Factor is very irrelevant now. Uh, they've got, like, the Animal Planet actors. They've got the Day in the Park with Barney Theater, which just closed. Dragon, what I'm getting at is that there, there's essentially a whole lot of nothing on that whole side of, uh, of the park. And if they want to build a, you know, a Super Nintendo World 2.0, like, let's say, like, a Pokemon Land or something like that, hypothetically, something that would, like, draw the kids in, right, in a, you know, as a replacement to Woody Woodpecker, I, I still don't think they need to get rid of E.T. I think there's still plenty of dead space on that side of the park to work with. My operating point, Tiki, is that so you're just if I if I have it correct here. So in you know, California, though, that is pretty much what they're doing. Though they're, they're they you know that whole area is isn't that being terraformed into Nintendo Land? In California. No, 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 California Nintendo Land. Basically, what they did is they took out a chunk of the back lot, and Nintendo Land is going to be kind of like back behind Transformers and Jurassic Park in California on the lower lot. No. So they didn't really take out anything besides back lot. Hmm. All right. So regardless, uh, there is a fear that uh, we're going to take advantage, that Universal may one day take advantage of the fact Steven Spielberg is busy and uh, mischief mischief could occur. And uh, you, I'm just worried that Spielberg's just not going to be relevant enough at some point. Well, that is, I mean, you know, given the fact he's not directing Indy 5, that 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 could that day could be arriving. He's not directing Indy, I mean, we'll see how West Side Story does, but I'm not seeing it, like, I'm seeing way more hype for stuff like In the Heights than West Side Story. Well, so I'm saying, we'll even, if, even if West Side Story's great, I'm saying, I don't think it's enough to, like, revitalize, you know, kind of like, the, the, you know, the name of the, the, the cream's I, I, I fear. It's his first musical, so you never know, it is his first musical, I uh, guess. <laughs> We'll see know. how it goes. We'll like, see. Dragon. It could go see. either way, Dragon. It could wildly swing either way. That was kind of my reaction when I saw the trailer. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, that's 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 the background. You know, E.T. is kind of the last survivor, essentially, right now. Of, of, in many respects, honestly, it's one of the last. Uh, you know, it's one of the last holdout attractions of the bunch, too. I mean, if you think about the the classics and the ones that hadn't just had hadn't been touched. I mean, Florida right now is pretty much the last holdout. Yeah. So, Dragon, would you like to uh, kind of be our Spielberg and sort of, like, introduce us to sort of the general premise of the attraction? Sure. All right, folks. So, the... Um... The attraction, uh, very simply, is uh, it, it, it's changed slightly over the years. There was a there was a pre-show, and the pre-show is is is, is phenomenal. It's uh, you know it's the um, for me the most nostalgic aspect um, with a very interesting progression. See, originally, if I recall, the uh, the version uh, pre the one that you and I have, have, have finally attached ourselves to was you were basically enacting the. Um, you you were uh, cast in the ET sequel essentially. That was pretty much the, the whole premise. That's what it used to be in the original. You run a movie theater with Spielberg and E.T. just kind of chowing down on popcorn, just kind of watching the movie. Like, hey, I'm going to direct you guys in, in in the movie, and E.T. is going to be your co-star. <laughs> you know what's funny about that is that the Mummy ride in, in Florida, not in Hollywood, but in Florida, again, I want to make, I want to emphasize, it would make more sense in Hollywood, since it's literally right next to a back lot, they would be shooting an active movie right there. But no, in Florida, Florida, why is my name Florida? I'm sorry, I just had to throw that in there. Um, the premise of that ride is that you're on, like, basically you're an extra on a mummy movie set. And it's like a, uh, and the mummy movie set is actually cursed. And so it's like, oh no, like, we're, you know, we're just here to be extras, but the curse is actually, you know, but the curse is actually real. Oh, shenanigans. Dragon, I feel like that's it's funny because that's a that's an homage to E.T. in some ways, just the whole like, you know, like we're extras in a sequel to a movie that's that the ride is themed around. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like we don't even do that in the Hollywood park where the that the Hollywood park is where the mummy actually kill E.T. It's 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 a weird contradiction. Okay, very go ahead. Right. I'm sorry. It's very ironic. So so the pre-show has, again, there's like three, technically there's three versions of the pre-show. The first one is what I just told you, which they, they changed out uh, around 2002 during the 20th anniversary. Now, somewhere in the middle there, I want to say it was in California, but I can't quite pinpoint it. There essentially was the the version of the 20th anniversary one, which is basically what's there now, and the, the much better version, like the go-to version. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Like, basically, it was the same thing. It was just like, honestly, Spielberg's acting wasn't great in the second one either. The first two, the first two pretty sure Spielberg's acting, eh. But uh, it gets perfect by the time they do, like, the 20th anniversary kind of revamp, if you will, where we set the atmosphere. Folks, let me paint you a picture so you walk oh, in the attraction. Oh, please do, please do. <laughs> Folks, again, the best, part, this the best part of the whole attraction for me. So you're, you're walking up essentially to what looks like kind of like a sound stage of, of a building. You walk in there, you walk through little guardrails and everything, and, and you, you, they, they corral you in. You get all corralled inside of a sound stage. And the doors close, and the light disappears, and then you all—all all you have is the light on the monitors in front of you, uh, uh, above the doors that will that will take you to kind of nostalgic nirvana, if you will. <laughs> By the way, fun fact: John Williams, he did actually, because Spielberg played all the stops for this. John Williams scored the attraction specifically; it wasn't just the reuse of the score. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, you know, there's obviously, like, you know, hid, hints of the classic theme, but oh, yeah, yeah, there's definitely yeah. a lot of original stuff, too, for sure. I was saying, it's cool, like, they got Williams back for the attraction, too, mm-hmm. just, you know, anyway, so, um, so just the atmosphere is just, is just, it's electrifying, it's just so, it, it, it just, the the atmosphere and the settings just kind of established perfectly here, where you have on, on a screen, you have to, well, I don't know why, I just always love the cheesy kind of like, E.T., just kind of like on the screen oh, up here. Oh, no, yeah. I totally hear you, that, that cheese is straight out of the 90s, Dragon, and I love it. So, um... So again, so like after that, then we have like the atmosphere perfectly set, and you're surrounded by darkness and everything, with people just excited. It's like, oh, what's happening? Just, just surround around you, and you have a very kindly and wise and director versus kind of like kind of the cock and you're like, oh yeah, I'm just telling folks that I'm shooting the movie uh-huh. in that first. This is like the the wise and you know again, this is the the kindly wise and director in a foggy forest, just kind of coming up here, and and also Tiki, this uh, along with Freak was my proper introduction to Steven Spielberg. Oh, I'm not surprised. Day. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it was it's, probably a lot of kids. See, I'm like, yeah, who is this? I keep hearing that Spielberg name. They mentioned one Freak is so this is the actual guy. What do you know? <laughs> so he just he just brought there. There's a warmth, but there's an urgency amidst the wealth. And I'm like, hi, folks. I'm Steven Spielberg. But listen, I got to cut to the chase right now. E.T. needs your help. Like, how how are you not sucked in right there? Like, E.T. needs your help, guys. It's like, okay, I'm down. I'm, I'm fucking down, Spielberg. <laughs> like, oh my god, this, you know... The, Whatever you need me to do, sir. <laughs> again, there's just, like, there was just already kind of respectability of this kind of this, right, this man right. in this kind of this, this, this very familiar environment of the kind of E.T. forest, if you will. He's kind of shows up. <laughs> just, and just, again, he's, he's, basically, he's playing the role of Mr. Exposition, but there's a gravitas attached to it, right? He's saying, essentially, long story short, is that E.T.'s teacher, Botanicus, needs E.T.'s healing touch to heal the, uh, the the green plant where he comes from. We have this graphic. Uh, and again, by the way, this is major world building. Again, we, it, it's filling in a huge blank of like, okay, this is what happens at the very end of E.T. we didn't see. He's going to the green planet. This is, this is huge. We're kind of the E.T. mythos. You know, before we get that Christmas commercial, this is, this is big, you know? So the uh, you know, we established the stakes of the dying planet with a little graphic, which is okay. With green planets going really brown and dingy, that's not good. An environmental message. All right, I'm I'm in. Um, and we uh, you know look out for ET's uh, plant based friends along the way, which you know the mushroom, the vine haired haired one, and all that sort of you know that sort of stuff. You know, look, I guess it's a little like, hey, look at little Easter eggs along the ride. Check them out. <laughs> it's kind of, it's yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, oh, right, right. Little, well, where's Waldo, if you will? I am sure the reason that's there is because those characters are entirely unfamiliar. And so at the very least, we need to kind of like put them in, uh, you know, in guest heads before the actual ride in some way. Exactly. So you're wondering, why am I looking at a random mushroom guy? Right, right. right. DP's buddy. So just in case, just in case it gets lost, just in the spectacle, you want, yeah, exactly. All right. So then we have just this charming interaction of old friends. This is this is wonderful, Steven. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's it's it, yeah, it's wonderful. And my favorite part, I love how Steven sort of shows him the respect, and he crouches down to him. He crouches down in his space mm. just to kind of meet him on on eye level here. This is, you know, like that's right, ET. He's just like, trouble. That's right, E.T. There is trouble. E.T., why don't you show what they'll be riding on? They bring E.T. brings down the bikes mm-hmm. for their three million light year journey on, on, on a bike. And, and of course, they have that charming line from Spielberg. Which, again, he delivers so well here compared to what he's done in the previous iterations. Just saying, don't worry. You don't have to pedal. Yeah, but, yeah. But you will. And this has always been my favorite part, by the way. It's like, don't worry. You don't have to pedal, but you will need this. And then we have the interplanetary passport. 
I love me the interplanetary oh boy. passport. Oh boy. It's such a unique detail. It's a okay, nice little here's card. The thing. Here's the thing. It's a great detail. Um, I don't think it works very well. Worked fine for me. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, okay. It, like, I put in Tiki. Yeah. And I, I didn't hear Tiki. Did, are you sure you said it right? <laughs> well, you, you mean spell it right? Because I had to spell my name on the card. Really? Yeah. They don't always ask you to spell it. That's why I'm a little baffled. I just thought you said maybe they misheard you or something. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. Anyway, okay, the point. Okay, I fine, think I well, heard like PD or something. That's what I'm saying. It sounds like you might have just, but again, if you spell that, I don't know how that happens. No. Yeah, I don't either. All right, well, it's, well, I don't know what to tell you. My maybe theory is that, my theory is that, like, Tiki was not in the, uh, uh, you know, directory of words, he could say. That is, oh, I, I never thought of that. That's my theory, Oh, Dragon. my God, that's a good that's theory. That's my theory. <laughs> oh, but Tiki, that's genius. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we saw. I mean, you know, I'm it. sure if I said Tyler, it would have been. No, fine, of course but... it would have. But no, it's that's a. I, that's a. You know, I but I'm Tiki, man. I want to see. I, no, no, I, I, I think I think you <laughs> solved the mystery. I think you got yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Anyway, so. All right. But seriously, this, this is the concept of the internal pass, passport. I don't know. It's just such a unique detail. Arrives a nice little card. It's got a sweet tail. It slows down the line, which is why I think on busier days they might want to nix the detail. Yeah, but it's it's really it's a really cute thing for the end of the ride, and it was really kind of charmed me as a kid. I mean, I was just jazzed out my mind about that as a kid. Like, oh my! I'm we'll honestly surprised they're still doing it, but I, I support them doing yeah. it. Yeah, surprised they're doing it. So, just again, I just want to emphasize this with the whole bike thing. So, a three million light year journey on a bike. Now, Tiki, ordinary circumstances, I should be, the United States should be like that is utter BS. Yeah. <laughs> The atmosphere, right, right. And the legitimacy that has been that has been achieved in this pre-show completely sells you on it. It's like, okay, ET's in trouble. We're bringing down the bikes. We're going to go on it. Iconography. I'll go for it. Yes. I mean, we honestly, gotta... even as an adult, it sells me on it. Right. That's what I'm saying. It, it should it shouldn't work, but you but you, you're sucked into it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, so anyway, so um, it's up. Then Spielberg people are kind of giving me the last pep, pep dog. You're like, it's up to you. E.T. is counting on you, and so am I. Like, Steven okay. Spielberg is counting on you to help E.T. Like, how can you not want to help help little E.T. there? Kind of, you know, save his if plan. we do this right, we might get a memo. Yes! We might get a memo. <laughs> we got a memo. Could you imagine if they actually gave out memos from Steven at the end of the ride? That would be highly impractical, but it'd be wonderful. I know, like, hey, guys, well, I'm not saying actual memos. I'm just saying, you know, just like a, you know, maybe he could do, like, one memo and they could, like, photocopy them. Like, hey, guys, thanks for saving E.T. You're a pal, Steven. I, I would frame that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. All right. So then, basically, you get in line to get the passport, and this kind of takes us into the queue itself. After, and also, like along the hallways, you have like these snapshots of the iconic moments from the film. It's nice, you know. I gotta tell you, if you're gonna wait in line, it's not a bad way to wait. It's kind of nice. Uh, Speak. Um. So, Dragon, we gotta we gotta talk about fake theme park smells because we can't go any further into this po into this podcast without bringing up. In my opinion, what is the uh, the absolute crown jewel of the ET Adventure ride, which is that damn forest smell dragon? I mean, it yep. is unlike it is unlike any sort of like pine air freshener you have ever smelled, man. It is. It's like legit pine, not like air mm -hmm. freshener pine. You know, it's like you have like the dampness in there it's somehow. Better than legit pine. I mean, it's just like I don't even know how they do it. I wonder if it's It's purely... like the blue meth of pine scents. You know, take it, a part of me wonders is I think there's like a pine scent in there, but I think the rest of it is just again the ambiance of again I have like the white noise of like you know all the uh, you know like the like you know the ambient creature sounds and everything. And I don't know there. though. I don't know because uh, I think it's half actual smell and half just the brain doing the rest of the work. That's I mean, I you're think probably of. right, but at the same point, Dragon, like I bought in uh, I bought in candles based on this scent. And, like, there's something about this scent in particular, like, even when you're just burning it at home, where it's like, uh, yeah, it it just it, it just takes you somewhere, man. It, it just hits you. It's so potent. 
I think, so the, I, I think the potency of it is really, you know, the fact that it just hits you in the face as soon as you walk in. This is going to sound really simple, but uh, just as someone who's not crazy about actual outdoorsy stuff, I just love the idea of an artificial outdoors that simulates the outdoors perfectly. Oh, no, I love it, too. I love it, too. It's great. Like I would go camping here, but not in the actual. <laughs> right, like this, right, I right. could do. This could actually be cozy. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, but, yeah, anyways, so this uh, this space here, like I just love the transition. You walk from like kind of the hallways of this kind of whole passport thing to like just past these doors. You're in. You're suddenly again. You've stepped into the movie. Mm-hmm. You're you're in. I mean, you're you know you're still again. You're waiting in line. It should be mundane as all get out. But look at the splendor of the outdoors. No, as and, soon as you're in this room, it's. I mean, game over. I don't give a shit how long I have to wait. And then and also then you have like you're not just not just indoors. You have like stuff going on, on the side too. Like, you have the government. You have like the hazmat suit guys. It's you know, the government. Have, Et run. Yeah, speaking of which, if you look, you see little red glow. Et's running around in the background uh-huh. of that ride. Uh-huh. You have like you know Botanicus beaming down, giving you a little glowing message. You know, Et. I love Ranger. the Botanicus cameo dragon. That's so cool. Yeah, and then we have like the speak and spell thing that's saying to help Et. It's spelling it out, and it, yeah, it's it's. <laughs> Great. So then, of course, uh, we 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 board the ride. The the bikes, the bikes have descended. <laughs> so the they bikes can... are among some of the most clever ride vehicles I've ever been on. Dragon. Yeah, I uh, I heard that apparently. So the really cool thing. I've never been lucky enough to get the. I don't think I've ever been lucky enough to get the front seat. But the uh, the, the very front seat of the ride has ET in the basket. And usually, what they do is that you know you. Well, at least I guess back then more than today. I don't know what the kind of hoops you got to jump through now today because I, I went to theme parks before you had like the wristband and all that stuff to worry about. So that's how far back I go. Um, you know, the um, the ki- they would save it for kids. Like you were, could request it so a kid could like ride with ET in the front. Uh-huh. That's kind of the way it's usually kind of struck. At least I, I believe that's what they were. That, I believe it's what they did. I had no idea that was a thing back then, but apparently now it's it was, it was a, kind of a cool little. That's a cool little idea. So then we we take. So then the ride begins. We take off like Peter Pan's flight, pretty much. Again, pretty much uh, you know straightforward kind of way out like that. But it's Peter Pan's flight with a sense of danger to it. Yes, though. that that's, that's the thing. The first uh, Tiki, the first part of this ride is utterly enthralling, and you're there. And Alan Davio, of course, the guy who uh, did the cinematography, for ET, I think he'd be very proud of his work being represented here. Um, where he, have, of course, you know, we're at, we have like the base camp of, of the of the government searching for ET, and it's just a testament to atmosphere and the and also with the Davi of it all, the Davi of it all, the intensity of lighting. Mm-hmm. Where when, absolutely, those, absolutely. when those headlights come out, it's like it's almost like Jaws. You know, it's like it's like stay out of the light. <laughs> I honestly fire. feel like this was also a part of why I was scared of the ride as a kid because I knew this stuff was in there. Yeah, but it's awesome though. Oh, it is. It is. All right, so you know you're riding on the forest path here, and uh, you're everywhere, um, everywhere you turn, there's you know, vehicles and those headlights, and also fun sound design thing. You can hear keys. It's keys. Uh-huh. It's Peter Coyote. Coyote. <laughs> Anyway, so then, of course, end of the road. And then we after we, we we crash through the bushes. Uh, you know, we uh, you know you're surrounded. Like, oh god, what are we gonna do? And then, of course, E.T. saying fly, and and we we you know, we kind of we go from a, a ramp to taking flight. And you look down, you have like the beautiful cityscape of the town. Then you have the stars, and we fly past the moon. You get the little silhouettes on the little moon. All right. Well, I'm just gonna say that the city flyover is like way more impressive than anything in Peter Pan's flight dragon I think the city flyover is like an underrated theme park miniature the scaling is just perfect you know it is it is because it does make it feel like you're yeah you know, it gives you that sense of almost vertigo or something and then of course the moon as well like the moon being the iconic kind of like oh we're doing it man we're doing it it just it takes you there and there was a very Peter Pan esque moment of which you know instead of like turning at the star, you know you're kind of like just you're kind of veering off from the moon, and then you have like that little portal, which again like the instantaneousness of that portal is really impressive. It's real simple when you think about it, but it's really you have like little swirling lights that essentially send uh-huh. you three million miles, the three million light years more accurately. And, uh, and then of course like you turn and you're ju- you're just there. Right, You're just right. there, and I gotta tell you, so here's where the ride. Here's where I I kind of align with you here. So again. Uh, 
I, being sucked into the adventure with that amazing pre-show, it's like, okay, oh god, we're here. Are we going to be able to muster up the courage? Like, we've, we've, we've gone this far. We've uh-huh. reached the plan. There's like, this sense of dread where, oh god, look, there's lava on the planet. It's not doing well. It's it's kind of scary uh-huh. arriving at E.T.'s home planet when it's not at its, its kind of lush, you know, kind of green. It's like, home, oh, and you know, you get that the strobe light and everything. It's just, it's a little intimidating seeing the planet in peril. So again, I'm utterly sucked in. Then we have Botanicus essentially saying, find your friends as he finds his friends basically touching the, fixing the individual elements that represent them. Sorry, and, can uh, we just take one second to, uh, I mean, I know that podcast, The Ride, has already covered this subject to death, but can we just take a second to acknowledge how great Botanicus is as, like, a theme park character? Well, why don't you start us off? Well, I mean, I just love how he, uh, I I feel like out of anything in this ride, and uh, honestly, a lot of stuff in terms of, uh, you know, characters that are invented for the ride in an IP, like, let's say, like, Let's say, like, Commander Beck from, uh, you know, from Rise of the Resistance, for example. You know, he, he's a really solid character. I don't know if he'd be able to, like, hold his own, like, as, you know, in a, as a main character in a movie or anything. But, Dragon, I tell you, if they ever did do, an, uh, you know, a second E.T., I mean, I know it's blasphemy, but you never know. It is Hollywood. I mean, it's like, you know, we did see that one commercial and, you know, my God, it hit us in the field. So the concept I could work. Um... I mean, if they ever did a second E.T., like, I feel like Botanicus is just, like, such... Like, they they don't have to take anything else from the actual planet. But Botanicus is, like, E.T.'s teacher. is such a good idea. Such a good character. You know what they should do? It would be amazing. I'm I'm hoping it would never, ever come to this. But you know what would be the best, like, most motivational story ever? What? Okay, if... The ET, the surviving ET attraction, were in the crosshairs. Let's say, for argument's sake, which we know in one day, who knows? Hopefully, that day will never come. I want to be very clear. Knock on wood, all that. But if that day comes, imagine if we hurried into production another commercial that would basically be a campaign of of save ET adventure, and you have Botanicus in there, and there would mm-hmm. be a groundswell like, no, we're gonna boycott Universal if you get rid of it. Oh my god! Like, um, oh my god! Imagine if we like if we made like again the equivalency of like like a, a historical landmark <laughs> Universal. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? Thankfully, I'm, well, right now I'm hoping it never ever comes to just needing that as an option. But if that uh-huh. happens, that's you know, that's how you get your your, your Botanicus kind of revival and do it right, do it up right. You get those guys to kind of like come back and like basically make a short film out of the ET attraction. All right, so this is where the the attraction kind of starts to get weird. <laughs> yeah, this is where it, it, it's kind of like again because I'm so sucked into the adventure of like, okay, well now we're on the plan. How I mean, again, we realize, oh yeah, it's just as simple as just needs to touch and then and it's fine. That's what Spielberg said to us at the top. It's like, yeah, I mean, I had all that dread, but I remember it's only like the, the ride's only like so many minutes long. That's mm-hmm. how rides are. <laughs> you know, we have to <laughs> have like a quick solution there. So we have. We have the three characters, uh, uh, Teakley, uh, Orbidon, and uh, um, Magdal. So those are the three, like the, the mushroom, the um, the plant guy, the mushroom, and the, and the lady with the, 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 the bind hair. And I really don't like any of these characters, Dragon. I no, really mushroom's don't. O- mushroom's okay. I got nothing against the mushroom. Got like a little storm cloud above. Oh, it's kind of cute. I don't know. <laughs> So basically, we just have this thing where kind of he visits his friends, and we have like this almost like again, I, I, if we were kind of comparing the. No, P- I'm sorry, you're right. The mushroom is good. I'm sorry. Yeah. I remember he's like kind of singing the song with the rain yeah. cloud. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. The mushroom out of the three is solid. Yeah, mushroom's cute. <laughs> and so basically, the idea is so when he keeps he meets his friends here, and again, this is where this is why we need to spell out the whole lookout for the friends. I mean, just basically when he he touches like the ground around his friends, and he kind of saves their respective environment. A little, uh, a little almost Tinkerbell effect of like mm. you know traveling light energy kind of takes you to the next scene, and uh, and it basically so after we've saved the day, we have a couple celebration scenes. We got some baby ETs, and uh, you know we have like kind of they're humming the st- now. I, uh, this to me is when I look back on the attractions, like yeah, this is uh, this is where I think everything else up to this point was really immersive and everything. This is the part where it feels like yeah, a little almost small worldy cash in, in Universal side of the fence here. It's like da 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 da. Basically, they're doing what we do very sadly at the top and bottom of, of Spielberg month. They're humming the ET. Yeah. 
<laughs> right, right. And it just feels like, I mean, guys, I mean, I know you don't want, like, a, a yub nub or anything right now, but, I mean, come on. <laughs> it's just a little... Yeah, it's not great. It's not great. It's like but... the one, it's like, to me, that I'll, I'll take care of it. That's like the one I want to, like, really on the nose. Like, yeah, we just want to end That being said, the... Dragon, that being said, after that room, I yes. do really appreciate, um... We have a room where, you know, there's still the baby ETs, but I really like, this is probably my favorite scene on the ET planet, where we just have all those water features going on as we're yeah. flying over them. Yeah. Um, like, that's really cool. Right? I'm always a fan of indoor water features and attractions. Yeah, and there's a lot of definitely kind of like water fountain kind of stuff going on, you know, during the ride and everything will spurt in water and the old Tarzan effect going on too. Like the old one's kind of doing like a Tarzan, you know, it's kind yeah, of... Yeah, so that, that that room is is great. That room is really good fun. And then we and have then, the uh, one that reaches me in the field. Iconic, uh, you know, this is like iconic theme park scene territory right here. Yeah. yeah. To me... Nice. I think to me and a lot of kids, just that like any kid who's going on the ET ride for the first time, I think they're gonna feel just like that mind bending moment of like on your way back, ET's like you think you're just gonna say you just imagine, okay, oh look there we're seeing E. T. one more time. He's probably gonna oh. say something like, Oh, phone home or you know, what he usually says, but no. He thanks you by name. It's like it's kinda of like that <laughs> people all the way. He knows my name. <laughs> It's he just like any any kid in the '90s, their head would just metaphorically explode. I, mean, I remember, well, my parents, <laughs> on the, my family on the ride, like we were just like we were all surprised by, it. like, oh my god, he, he knew it. I wonder how the heck did he know? It's crazy. So it just anyway, so it was just uh, you know, there's him just like shouting out the name, and it's just yeah, it's a it's a perfect kind of feel good feeling to, on, on on the end of the ride, and you return back to the station. The last image you see is like a little constellation of the of I the think iconic. That's a nice last image, Dragon. That's a really nice last image to end out to to end out on. Yeah, a little finger touch icon and constellation, but it's nice. And uh, then we enter the gift shop, which is quite, that's actually a really nice gift it's shop. It's a good gift shop. It's a damn good gift shop. Yeah, I'm e not going to mix words about that. <laughs> the gift shop is called E.T.'s Toy Closet. I which again, appreciate the fact that it's like 90% actual E.T. merch, and it's not just like a generic universal store. I know, and you know what kind of makes it kind of kind of special for reasons that this shouldn't be the case, because life is unfair, but I just love that we <laughs> Kind of ET is sheltered, is protecting the the other beloved Universal, you know, kind of properties. Um, Ninety percent ET, but ten percent little corner, Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah. Warms my heart that all oh, ET's protecting. Sure, sure. Back to the future. That's kind of <laughs> nice. And it, it also, it's really sweet looking Back to the Future merchandise. But I, I just, I just love the, you know, we have a, the plush ETs, which are you know, cute. And obviously, you know, the whole you know, ET hiding amongst the plush toys. There's some photo ops, you know. And the, the, they're selling red red hoodies, I you know, iconically ET red hoodies. It's really, it's really nice. And of course, the the insult injury is like we're selling Back to the Future merchandise, even though Back to the Future is gone. But you know, if anyone's going to have the right to sell the Back to the Future merchandise, it's going to be the ET, right? You know. <laughs> totally, totally. Oh, you know? yeah. All right, uh, Dragon. Uh, I guess just final thoughts. We've pretty much reached the end. Yeah, I kind of want to go on it again. You want to? You want to start the conversation over oh, no, again? Right. <laughs> Well, Dragon, you know, I gotta tell you, those doors close, and the music starts, and all right, no, no, but. <laughs> so, final thoughts? All right, final thoughts for me. Okay, so, <laughs> this ride is so much better than it has any right to be, uh, in a certain way. You know, there's, there's an earnestness to it in its simplicity, you know, it's, it creates this escapism that, you know, it, 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 it's cool, you know, it's cool that not only not only of of, of an attraction, it's like the goal not only of an attraction to provide that escapism, but you know, film itself is all is an escapist medium. And you know, Spielberg, you know, made made a whole career, you know, doing doing this with his movies, you know, you know providing the escapism and just kind of like kind of transporting you with the you know, kind of the kind of the whimsy and the spectacle and the sincerity and 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 in and what have you, and you know, kind of turned uh, you know, kind of Universal Studios into the superpower that it became with kind of Spielberg kind of bringing these rides to it, and again stuff like ET, and of course even beyond that, as I mentioned before, like you know, Back to the Future and Jaws really helped put it on the map when you know Disney was kind of like you know trying to you know, was trying to compete with Universal or basically gave something basically gave Disney something to compete with once Universal really kind of like you know, kind of made them hot under the collar like oh god we're, we we got to get that celebrity movie ride thing going <laughs> we, we need to compete and uh, it's only fitting 
that the ride represent that that escapist magic. I feel, and you know, it's at least in some form, it's still here after after thirty years. You know, and I think that's that's a testament after everything else is just kind of like gone or just transformed beyond its its it, it, its recognition in, in so many respects. And you know, there is there's always the temptation of progress and much as I'd like to think Spielberg, he can't protect it forever. And, you know, IPs are on the horizon, I'm sure, down the line. I mean, I'm going to take, I'm going to mourn the day when one of, of, of the last holdouts dies and Universal loses the, just, you know, that the reminder of the magic of that, sure. that ca- capture on celluloid metal and clay. You know, when they lose that, they're going to lose some special that's what this ride is it's it's just it's it's walking into the movies it's going on an adventure hence the title all right dragon now uh, th- th- there's no way i can top that. that that's you know you summed up very well um you know i i think top to bottom folks this is just an all around just really fantastic attraction i think it's just a master class of a cue it's a master class in like fake sense like i can't emphasize that enough um, the ride itself is wonky, but I feel like the wonkiness, uh, gives it a charm, and, like, 90% of it, as we established, is rock solid anyway, so it's not like there's that much wonkiness to it. So, uh, yeah, overall, uh, Dragon, uh, and of course, with the, uh, 20th slash 30th anniversary of it all, I mean, it's just a trip, and I think the ride, like, I truly really think the ride holds up super well compared to you know, some of the other uh, animatronic heavy rides that were maybe around, you know, released around that time. So, uh, you know, I, I really think that they did, that at least in Florida, they're doing a great job of kind of, like, keeping up the effects and, uh, you know, like, like they could have easily phased out the cards and the name thing, but they haven't. Um, you know, they could have easily turned off a lot of the water effects, but they haven't, you know, just general stuff like that, just general upkeep to keep the uh to keep the ride just going as strong as it is they've been keeping up with you know and honestly dragon the care that they put into making sure all that stuff is working is kind of like the best insurance i have that the ride's not going anywhere if that gives you uh, any comfort at all all right folks well uh thanks for joining us and stay tuned until next time in this historic season of Hello, I'm Steven Spielberg.